Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today's video is about the asset embedding project and its importance for Blender's future development. What is asset embedding and why should we care? Asset embedding is a method proposed to import asset into Blender. And the Blender is moving toward becoming an asset heavy software where many modifiers are expected to be replaced by node group based assets. This is along with the geometry nodes development. And this raises an important question. How should assets be imported into a Blender file? And how should the versioning be handled and so on and so forth? Currently in Blender, we have different ways to import assets. One of the major methods is appending. Appending isn't great. If you keep dragging the same asset into a project, Blender will duplicate it, creating versions like 001, 002, 003, and so on and so forth. Imagine you add a subdivision surface, uh, which is an asset, to a cube. And again, to Suzanne, Blender will create a duplicate copy like subdivision surface 001. This unnecessarily increases your file size and pollutes your search result. To address this, Blender introduced a variation called Append and Reuse as part of the Asset Library project. The key feature of this method is that when you drag in an asset that already exists in your file, it reuses the existing copy instead of making it a 001 duplicate. This is the foundation of the current geometry nodes asset system, as you can see in all these hair node groups. But there is a serious issue. There was once a bug in the hair asset node group provided by Blender Foundation. Although the bug was later fixed, the fix wasn't passed on to users easily. Why? Because the append and the reuse system prevents overriding existing assets. So if a user originally appended this asset in Blender 3.6, then opened the same file in Blender 4.1, they'd still be using the old buggy version from 3.6, ignoring the fix in 4.1. This means users don't benefit from both improvements and bug fixes. Yes, you can fix it manually, but it's complicated, and the users shouldn't have to put any efforts due to bugs that were created by Blender Foundation in the first place. Another way to import asset is through linking, which references the data from an external file. This method is great for saving file size and ensuring uh, the updates are reflected automatically. For example, if the external asset file is fixed or improved, any file that is linked to it will also benefit. However, this method has its own issue too. If you send a Blender file to your client, or a render farm that doesn't have access to this linked file, the assets reference will break, leaving behind the missing data box. To avoid this, you eventually have to make everything local, essentially turning the linked data into the appended data. The asset library project originally chose to go with the append and reuse method prioritizing viewport stability over live updates. Even if it ignores future improvements, at least the visuals stay consistent. Using linking, on the other hand, can cause breakages if a future update changes socket type or node behavior in a way that's not backward compatible. Interestingly, even among developers, there are different opinions on which method is better or which method should be used. The team officially went with append and reuse methods, and they actively forbid users to choose other methods. Some developers still advocate for the linking methods. For my own extension, I choose to use linking because I value live updates and the bug fixes more than the strict file stability. In the end, neither method is perfect. I've spent most paragraphs in this video describing the problems, but it explains where this asset embedding project comes in. 
as far as I understand, it means to be a hybrid between linking and appending. It works like a link when the external file is present, but automatically switches to a local copy if this link is missing, updated, or broken. While the idea is promising, the actual implementation is very complex. It's been in development for several quarters, and we still haven't seen it fully realized. But it's expected to arrive in Blender 5.0 series. Blender will only begin shifting its geometry assets to user if, and only if, the system is fully completed. As a side note, according to the recent developer meeting notes, the feature has been renamed to Archive. This concludes this video. I wanted to talk about this because as Blender shifts towards becoming an asset-heavy software, we are facing existing problems, and the developers are actively working on solutions. I think this is something important and interesting to know behind the scene, as it will affect nearly all of us at the end of the day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time.